Uh, we're at a different spot today. Uh, we got a hike up a ridge. It's a little less than a mile, but there's a tank up there that had really good water two years ago. And I'm hoping that it has water now. Um, it looks pretty deep on the satellite imagery, so hopeful. But there was a, nah, it wasn't a ton of deer, but we were hitting here in rifle season. We saw a good number, and this is where I shot or not, it's the exact spot, but close to here is where I shot um, a buck with a rifle two years ago. So, I don't know, I'm excited. I just like exploring different stuff too, so we might end up going down this ridge quite a ways. Um, you can see a ton from up there, and there's another tank further down, so yeah. I just, I like going to different spots each day, which probably isn't the best thing for like learning what the deer are doing, but. There's deer everywhere, so we'll find them. A little buck just went over the skyline. I don't know if he's, he's probably spooked because there's this doe down here blowing like crazy. But uh, we're not to where we wanted to get to yet. I wanted to get up on this knob so we can look down into the basin that has the water. But that's a good sign that there's deer around. It means there's water here somewhere. But. There's definitely a lot of deer around. These ones all know we're here though. Oh, it's a dick dick. It's so hard to see, I, it's like, I don't even see him now, but I'm positive I saw little tiny spikers. Sonoran Dick Dick. We're, uh, we're about ready to spot out a great big one here. And Kurt's gonna go kill him. Well, we tried to get a different direction on this tank that's got water in it, but the road is closed. They, they gated it out now and said, this is not a road, so we couldn't go in there. And uh, so we came around the other way up on this ridge, but unfortunately, we knew the sun would be bad, but we're seeing a lot of deer. We saw a really nice buck with four does, five does, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we've seen at least a dozen deer already and the sun has just came up, so. One of the things we're finding is when all the tanks are dry, or not all, but most of them, the tanks that do have water have a lot of deer. So, hopefully we can get one bedded and put a stock on them and Kurt will get an arrow in him.
got him to 15 yards. If I had to have Alina tag you, if I would have missed, I would have been the saddest miss in the world. 15 yards, Brad. That was sweet. Of course, whoever doesn't have the Avelina day, because he's going to run into Avelina. All right, let's go find a deer. It's all right, folks. I, I thought we hit the jackpot. We found three really nice bucks this morning. One of them's lost, and two of them crawled into the cliffs there, and we can't. Even if we could relocate them, they're completely unstockable. Well, Kurt, I haven't come up with any better plan other than to go check some of these water tanks to see which ones have water. What else do you do when the sun's high noon? I'll just say this. I don't know the area. I'm relying on you. You said we do that yesterday. We went and checked it out, and we found some javelina. So we ended up today having a good time doing that. So. That was by accident, but I'll take credit for it. Uh, you deserve it, because it, 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 it happened. All right. Well, Kurt, we know there's water in this one, and it's noon, so my thought is we go check out a few more, and then we know which ones have water in them. All right, we're going to go see. This would be the only water source remaining. had this catchment shown on our map so we drove way back in here and took about 40 minutes to get here and there's no water in here because there's no water in the tank because it hasn't rained for months so up above this tank on the hill there's a great big apron that catches water when it rains and it comes down to a funnel it fills that tank and then that comes and fills this and looks like they got a couple other tanks here when they actually have water that they can fill. Keep moving, keep looking. We scanned this basin pretty good. There's probably deer here, but they're not moving around. Well, looking at the satellite imagery, pretty sure this is the only water for miles. I kind of want to be close to that water to be able to try to cut stuff off. Because for up here, we have no play on a moving deer. We're at least going to get close to that water because I think stuff's going to start moving around here pretty soon. So glad I bought my Arizona duck stamp. <laughs> I'm gonna try, try something really strange. So, south of here, about five miles, there is what we call the prickly pear farm, where the hillsides are nothing but prickly pear. And I'm wondering, because we've, we've seen two lone, doe 
coos deer down low in that prickly pear. I mean like down in the flats where you never see them. And I wonder because all the, the moisture or all the, the water being gone, if that's where they're going to get moisture, if they're getting it out of the prickly pear. So I know it's a weird experiment, but that's what we're gonna try this evening. We're going to the prickly pear farm. No, to the right of the tree, there's, okay, the ones walking back. Okay, those are all those. Four of them. Well, this experiment of coming down in the prickly pear, we've seen six does and we're 400 yards from the truck maybe. I haven't seen any javelina. I shot a javelina right over here, about three quarter mile over Michael's shoulder. That was two years ago. You ask about a javelina? Yeah. There's one right there by the road. Oh yeah, oh, we yeah. need to go kill that thing. Let's go kill that thing. Go ahead. Kurt just spotted javelina right down here by the truck where we parked. Now we gotta go 600 yards back the other way. Let's go get him. Give me a lowdown. Uh, Sandhill Crane, uh, enchiladas. Yeah? Did you shoot these cranes or are these your buddies that gave them to you? I did. These are, this is all thigh meat. Gotcha. Not just the breast, but you can take other parts of the bird and use them in new and interesting ways. Did I go stuff? No, boy, no. We're going to where we were the first day, to where we climbed up the mountain and could see this huge basin, big water source down below. Going back there, but we're going to do it differently. We're going to go out in a different spot at first light, and then wait till the sun starts hitting down um, below this dam, with the thought that then the thermals will be moving uphill, and we watched most of the deer come in from downhill. We're gonna sneak into that water hole. We're gonna sit there and we're gonna kill a deer. So anyhow, we're uh, here maybe two miles from where we were the first day when we saw a few bucks and not not a lot actually, but we saw a couple of groups of 
javelina, some quaddies, but we've had good luck out here. I think that tank down the below, below there is probably dry, but there's a tank down here that usually stays uh, filled with water way later, and then there's a tank way up to the north here, so uh, we'll see how, how it goes, but when the sun comes up, usually the landscape is full of moving little dots. And then we send Kurt out to get him. Got this on the dick deck. It just came out of the trees. Mm -hmm. We just saw some of the, some Sonoran dick dicks, a pair of them. One's got horns about that long. The other ones are like, he's a booner. He's like probably almost six inches. We're gonna go sit down at the, the little green patch down there where the deer have been watering. I think that's gonna be our best bet for actually killing a deer so dang i mean that's bound to happen but bummer because nice buck <laughs> all right we'll get down there i told everybody here that at 2 30 we were going to go and check out this other tank for the afternoon hunt and it's 2 30. so we're going to load up go bounce along this really terrible road to this other tank that I know of up here and see if there's water in it. So that's what we're gonna do, folks. Stand by for water. It's probably the biggest pool of water we've seen. Water there, have a lean amount all over in here. So for the evening, we might go sit up somewhere up here or in watch what might be approaching this water and who knows it might be deer it might be these javelina never know i got a water tank down over here about a half mile and we got all these hillsides and we got all those basins so we're going to climb up this little knob where we can last 360 Hide the truck in these trees here, and who knows what'll happen. So what are you doing, Marcus? Tell the audience. This is where a lot of the deer and javelina were coming to two days ago, so. Uh... <laughs> 
tried to make a stock on this little buck that came up above the tank probably, I don't know, 150 yards. But this is so noisy. <laughs> We're gonna drop back down. We left all our gear down in the bottom and then uh, maybe reposition because this hillside's getting shaded that we've been sitting on. So it's probably gonna, the wind's gonna switch. It's gonna start sinking before too long. With, and we probably just blew out everything that was on that face anyway. So we're going to reposition in anticipation of stuff coming out of this drainage and maybe sit on some trails that come into that, that big tank up here. So, Boy, would one of those be tasty. We could skin him and spit roast him. He's only about this big. <laughs> we could just put him on the grill, go buy enough foil, stuff him full of peppers and onions and just spit roast him all day. Yeah. I think you and Michael ought to sneak up there then if you'll shoot one of them. One of them is like this long and one of them actually curves. There's three of them now. Oh, there's three of them. Oh, cool. Better yet. Target rich environment. Well, we got three, two dick dicks and a spike, like a spike this long and they're in the shade they're just milling and feeding there and I think Kurt can kill one of them I think he's he's got a perfect win he's got a nice soft road he can cut most of the distance and when he gets up there he's got this prototype call they're just they're, they might run you over We have like an hour of light left. Not quite, 45 minutes hour. Anyway, we're gonna just slowly work our way back to the to the car, Jeep, whatever you wanna call it. And this kind of, I just kind of wanna see if I'm seeing any deer cruising, if there's any bucks that we could potentially cut off or just get a feel for what's here too. But there's not a lot going on down here. So we're gonna start working back and just, pick apart these sunny slopes while there's still a little sun on them. Tito's in the fawn, no box. Well, <laughs> back to the Jeep. We saw a couple does and a fawn. Still fun day. That was a lot of sitting water though. Hopefully we can get a deer in archery range. That would be sweet. <laughs> It'll happen. We still have three more days left, a full, full, 
We have three full days of hunting left, so it's gonna happen. We never seen the th the three that we went after. Oh. We seen three deer there at the end, yeah. coming off the hill. We never seen them again. Did you? No. You were, were you guys went in? That's where. If I were to give you hand signals of where to go, where the deer were, that's where I would have said those two old trees go right past those. I have, I have oh. no idea. <laughs> they flew away. <laughs> Josh Schulholt with the first one. Way to go, Josh. I have not eaten all day and I come back to the man himself, the one, the only Jonathan O'Dell making Havelina burgers. I'm I got This is the motivate you. I got drool coming off the corner of my mouth. This no pucky. No mayo, no mustard, no ketchup, just God's creation right there in a bun. Mmm, holy smoke. Javelina are gonna become an endangered species if everybody gets one of those burgers. What do you do with that? Wow. I'm all in favor of Havelina burgers every night. 